Welcome everybody. I think we're live now. If you can see me or and if you can hear me okay, um, please stick a quick message in the comments, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, to let me know. Today is the 26th of May, and it's not technically summer yet, but I've got the first rose from the garden to paint, so it feels like the first day of summer to me. I've controlled the light quite carefully today, which is why the camera, this camera looks a little bit darker to make the light a little bit more directional over here. So I've got the blind, I've got two big windows here. I've got the blind down on one. The blind is open in this one. And um, I've got a couple of boards to cast a shadow on the background of the setup. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Anne, thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. And the rose is turned towards the light, which means that <clears throat> I get a light shape of the rose against a darkish shadowed background. Let me bring up the um, reference so you can see a little bit clearer. Um, the colour's actually pretty good, I think, in the photo. Maybe the darks are a little dark, it's hard to say for sure. I'm going to have to start these streams earlier in the day, um, because the light is kind of coming up and down at the moment. It's a semi-overcast day and every now and again the sun is coming out. And when it does, it's actually in the room. The sun is in the room. So, you know, that means I'm against the clock. So I'm not going to get much further than just some colour notes, hopefully sorting out how I want the colour to work in this one today. Because as we go through the year, my windows are northwest facing. So as we go through the year, we get into summer. The sun comes further around the sky in this direction. And um, earlier in the day, it's starting to come into the studio now. So I'll have to change things. Let me show you. Here's the palette. So, the local colour of this rose is pretty much bang on that. Parts of it may be slightly lower chroma, same hue, lower chroma. And it's a couple of, a small area of it tends towards a slightly more orangey pink. So these chips here are more... Uh, towards orange red and away from blue red and that's because these are for the shadow colors and reds I find when they move into shadow They generally go towards orange and that's true of um, Reddish purples as well red purples. So the challenge I've got here is that I'm already at the highest chroma that I can possibly mix now if I turn this towards the light it gets a lot lighter, as you can see, it appears lighter, but it also loses chroma. And that's how far I need to turn it to match the value of the light parts of the rose, at which point I lose all the chroma. So the interesting thing for me now is I want that chroma, okay, for my general light color. So I'm gonna use this pretty much. I'm gonna mix this color. And then I'm gonna try and arrange the values in the painting so that this will work as the light and the shadow will be somewhere around these two. Let's um, bring up the camera on the panel. The panel is actually not lopsided, it's the camera angle. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, oh, Deborah says, what time do you think? Yeah, when I move them, it's, I'm probably going to start about an hour earlier, probably, which would be like, I know that if you're if in, on, on the Pacific Coast, I know that's like 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm sorry. But I, I can't paint with the, with the sun in the studio, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it has to be.
So, you know, this is going to be a challenging colour to mix just by itself. So let's see if we can mix this, right? So let me tell you what I've got on the palette and why they're there. I may need to add a couple of things, but we'll see as we go along, we'll see. Because everything else is very low chroma. Um, titanium white. I've also got, depending on how far I get through today, I might get some of this, which is Rublev Flemish white, which is a lead white. Now this is PY3, Michael Harding, um, bright yellow lake, and that is out on the palette because this mixed with black and a little bit of this, which is Windsor and Newton, Windsor green yellow shade, it's a phthalo green, will get me very close to the colour of the leaves. This is cadmium yellow and is out there just in case I want to push any of the colours a little bit round towards orange. And Michael Harding, uh, quinacridone rose, high chroma, blue red. Windsor and Newton, permanent magenta, high chroma magenta. This is um, Willingsburg's gold brown. Um, this is raw umber, I think it's Cranfield, is it Cranfield the one I use now? No, it's Michael Harding, Michael Harding raw umber. Ivory black. Not too much on the palette today because in terms of colour it's, it's there's not a lot of different colours in it. I, I almost said it's a fairly simple subject, but I think it's going to be anything but. So I, my, my goal, really, to start with, is just to get a high chroma shape of this colour with the right shadow colours as well, like sitting in the, on the panel and the values around it working nicely. So I'm going to start by mixing this colour. or getting as close to it as I possibly can. Oh, before I do though, I forgot to put out my oil. So I've already been painting um, this morning for, well, this morning and this afternoon for a few hours on a painting which sadly I don't think is gonna make the cut. Um, it was an interesting one and I, I put a lot of hours into it. Maybe I might go back to it, but all I have now is the photo to go on. Have a little bit of terps out as well. So, I just use that for cleaning the palette, really. Um, yeah, the painting, it was the one I started last week. The peonies changed out of all recognition, and I just don't think that one's going to make it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it to the same value as that chip. Look how powerful that chroma is, but it's the wrong hue. It's, it's a, it's a blue red, but it's, it, it needs more blue and less red. So the chrome is good, the value is about right, it's too red. So if I take this, which is uh, much more, it's not very far out, so I won't mix too much of this. This is much more blue red, this is like a magenta. I need this to be the same value, it's too light. It doesn't have anything like the chroma. I think I'm gonna try, this, this is Winter and Newton, I think I'm gonna try a couple of other magentas because I've been using it quite a bit lately and see if I can find a really high chroma one. Windsor and Newton paint is pretty good I think but if you want the really highest, this is too dark here, if you want the really highest chromas then generally speaking, I mean it depends on the, on the hue area which manufacturer is going to produce the highest chrome paint. But um, Michael Harding are really good for chroma. Why don't I bring this up? Shall I bring this up as the, the main camera just for now? Huh? 
so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. This is what happens when the sun comes out. The camera gets overexposed quite quickly. Get down a little bit. It blows out the lights and it's difficult to see the colour. Slightly dark, tiny bit too dark still. I wish I could get more chroma out of this. It's much lower chroma than the chip. That's the right value. So if I take a bunch of this, uh, I can swing the hue a little bit with this. It won't change the value, but it will drop the chroma. Thankfully, I've got a little bit of chroma to spare. Because this colour here is, is higher chroma than the target colour. It's good, but the value is slightly low. I'm going to bring the value up a little bit. That'll do fine. So if I show you... Um, I'll show you the Monster page that this chip comes from. It's this one here. Oh, the sun's gone in again and now the camera's a bit dark. Never mind, I'll bring it up in a bit. So this one... Go here. The highest chroma that I can get. And if I go up a value, then I lose loads of chroma. I can't, I can't get the chroma at a higher value. That one goes there actually, sorry. Goes there. So I lose a lot of chroma if I go up, I lose a step. So I'm going to see if I can um, organise the values so that I can paint with a, with a darker, a lower value light. But still keep the chroma. So I'll actually I'll mix the shadow colour as well. Maybe somewhere between these. Now that's going to be closer to this. That's actually very, very close. So a good general shadow colour is likely to be this, which is quinacridone rose. But it wants to go a little bit more towards a blue red. I'm not going to change the value because the, the only thing I can do to change the value without changing the hue of this is to add white, which I can do at any point and I want to I want to decide that should do it. I want to decide how far I want to move that value up. And I can drop the chroma pretty easily if I need to. Let's get some oil on the panel. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> sneeze. Yeah, Diane, aren't they lovely? Lovely, lovely colours. I think they're looking a little bit low chroma. I'm going to bring the chroma up. There was such, well, it's actually saturation on the camera, but... I'll bring it up a little way because I think it's looking a little bit washed out. So you can see them a little better, hopefully. That looks more accurate to me. <coughs> Diane, are you excited about rose season? Are, are your roses out yet? 
I know you like to paint a rose or two yourself. Oh, Mariana says, gambling quinacridon magenta is pretty high chroma. Cool, I shall try it out. I shall try it. The colour chips, where do you get them? They're from the Munsell Big Book of Colour. These are the, this is the glossy edition. It's basically, um, that, that page that I showed you is one hue, and there are a series of different hues um, that cover the whole, it basically covers the whole spectrum of all the colors that you can mix with paint. The, the full range of color that you can mix with paint. So if you're trying to hit a color and it's not in that book, like I am here, I would like to be able to get higher value of that with um, more chroma. I can't do it, it's not possible. Can't be done with paint. It, it is there in the subject, but I can't reach it. Once a book of color. The new one is slightly different. Mine is old, it's like 10, 15 years old or something like that. Yes, Diane, I am very excited about rose season and our rose bushes are starting to produce roses. My favourite one, they're still buds, they're not, they haven't properly opened yet, my favourite rose bush in the garden, but they'll be coming soon. I'm really excited about it. Ridiculously so, actually. I don't know why so much this year, but I really am. Um, I'm going to cover this panel with oil. Actually, this is an ex peony painting. I think it was peonies I painted on here originally that I then scraped off. Was it peonies? I can't remember now. Yeah, it was peonies. And I, <laughs> I remember now, and I did a peony painting, just a single peony in a day, and it started off really well, and I thought, oh, this is going great. You know, it's gonna be a really nice painting, and I worked on it, and I worked on it. I thought, right, just add the details, put the details in. Quite Feeling quite satisfied with it. Went to bed. Got up the next day. Oh my God, it's a disaster. And uh, so, oh, sorry. So I, um, I wiped it. So this is an ex peony, which is now hopefully gonna become a rose. And the reason I wiped it was because what had gone wrong was I'd lost the structure of the values. There was no form. The details in themselves were nicely painted, I thought. But overall, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd lost concentration at the end. Oh, sorry, I forgot to switch cameras. I lost the concentration at the end, and I um. I lost the balance of the values, which meant I lost the light and the shadow, the relationship between the light and the shadow, and I lost the form. And, and it was, the paint was too thick by then, and it was starting to dry, so I just, uh, I gave it up as a bad job and started again. So this I've just painted into here is a, is a near neutral. It's, um, that was ivory black, raw umber and titanium white. I just want something on the panel, partly to give it a bit of texture and partly so that um, I know all this is going to be quite dark. So that when I, when I put a colour down, I have some idea of how it's going to appear. Well, this is going to be pretty dark. Just making vague notes really at the moment, where things are going to be going. A big dark shape comes down. I just want to have something down when I put that pink in, so I got. I tend these days, I, I tend to. I don't start drawing out until I've got some of the, uh, the subject in where I think I want it to be, and I think I want the rose to be. This is an oil primed linen panel, very fine linen. It's actually very slick once it gets the oil, the uh, linseed oil coating on it. 
It's very slick, it's nice. Should it be higher? It should be higher, shouldn't it? Uh, yeah, because the little the body's going to go up there. And a bit more towards the right, probably, as well. Trying to think in um, kind of broad general terms to start with. Let's get that nice and clean because I want maximum chroma here. I don't want any of that inter interfering. With the color I'm about to put down. That'll be the shadow there. And one of the, the, the relationship that I'm keenest to establish is between the shadow and the, and the the shadow around the here and the and the light part of the rose. So, if I was going to use this colour, I will end up. This is like hopefully will be like a good general. It's going to be too. I'm going to have to compromise a bit. It's going to be too dark. Shadow colour would be perhaps not quite that dark. Perhaps won't need all that chroma. I think it might have to go a bit more. Funnily enough, I think I do. I'm going to want it to go a bit more. I'm putting a small amount of yellow in it to push it round more towards an orange red. I think it's going to want to go more orange red. So that would mean this value here needs to be about the same as that one there. What kind of colour is that? This I do this a lot when I'm trying to... I mean, judging the colour of like a, a deep shadow like that on a neutral surface is tricky. Lately I've been pretty convinced that they tend towards like a greenish yellow. <laughs> you might not be convinced. So this is what I'm looking for. It's a piece of paper with a hole in it. Show you another really useful thing about the Monsel book. You should get a few pages of these, which are called the near neutrals. You know, and they're quite handy for checking values and also for checking hues of really low low chroma areas. When I check value these days, I don't... When I'm painting, doing a painting like this anyway, and it's not a study, I try to find um, other areas of, of, the, of the subject that are the same value and try and work, work on the value balance that way. I'm going to want some... Thank you. 
this is Michael Harding Green Gold. I've been I've found I've been using this a lot in shadows as well because it gets me um, quite close to the kind of hue I want. There's quite a lot of chroma in, in shadows. Like the shadow areas here are going to be higher chroma than the lights, you know. And lately I've been finding a lot that I tend to put some black, drop the chrome a little bit. I tend to be putting more chroma into those shadows just lately. I don't want to go right down the bottom because do I want to go? I mean the darkest dark part is probably the shadow on the wooden surface. So I don't want to go right down to the bottom, but, but near. About the same value as that, maybe a little bit lower. I'm trying to get the value relationship. So what I try to do with the color is, I try to ma match the chromas and the hues as much as I can and then with um, the values I try to, because we're so limited in value terms and because of the link between value and chroma, like quite often it's, you can't get the chroma you want at the value you want, so you have to decide where to sacrifice something. So I tend to look for a, a balance of the values more than try to match them as they, as they are, if that makes sense. Don't think that's well. Let's see. Let's see how we go. Don't think that's going to stand out enough. Probably going to want to bring that value down. That's quite near the bottom of the range, though. I mean, that's a. This is a Munsell value scale. I'm probably at about a four there, I'm probably about here. I'm probably going to need to go lower. So the darkest part of the painting I want to put in now, which is the shadow area of the um, that brown little shelf thing that the, the vase is on. So let's have a think about that. And the lightest part, I'll put the lightest part in. Is going to be the highlight on the bars. Hello, Alexandra. Brazil. Nancy, yeah, the gang's all here, huh? Diane, yes, that's a really good point. You may very well be right. And we really do need some beauty in our lives at the moment, don't we? I think we really do. So that's a reddish brown, that shadow. So I'm going to start with raw umber, bring the value down with black, and I'm putting in a small amount of this Williamsburg gold brown. Um, I wonder, actually, you could probably mix a, um, something very close to burnt umber with raw umber black and Williamsburg gold brown. It's nice because it has a lot of... Chroma. Yeah, you see, this value needs to be almost as low as this.
That would be the edge of the bars. My highlight is in the wrong place. I think that would actually be... I just want that note to, to, to give me that value. So the back of the vase will be about here. Cast shadow. Just measuring quickly to see how many times the the rose fits into the height of the vase. Not quite two times. It is, to be fair, it's kind of a, a tricky way to paint Anna Prima, trying to do everything at the same time. It's kind of a fun challenge too. I would say the bottom of the vase is going to be about there. We should put the cast shadow about here. The main thing that strikes me is this value needs to come down quite a long way. Because you can't there's a, it's very, very slightly lighter than the cast shadow on that brown. Surface that the vase is on, which is going to help. The rows stand out a bit more. Part of the reason I like painting into an oil surface like this is you can immediately get um, you can cover areas quite quickly and immediately get an impression of how the thing is going to look. This is just um, soft synthetic. It's actually a little bit wet, so I probably shouldn't use it because I washed it earlier on. So maybe starting to get some idea of how this pink is going to work now. 
it's gonna be even with these values low. It's gonna be, I'm gonna have to bring up the values and lose some chroma in some places. Um, what I wanna get now is, is this part. I want to bring up I want to put in that, the value of the background where it's in the light. I'm just going to bring the camera on the panel up a bit. Losing, losing a bit of light here. It looked like it might rain actually, it suddenly got quite dark. The palette too. It's a bit better. Now we can see. And another reason, Diane, that I'm really excited about rose season, I don't know if you, you probably know about this, um, but Kathy Speranza has just put out her, um, the first video in her rose painting series. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited about that. She's a lovely person, Kathy, and she's such a fantastic painter. And I just watched the first one today, and I have to say, I think it was brilliant. I mean, she uses Munsell like I do, so, you know, obviously there's going to be, a, a, I knew I was going to like it, <laughs> but immediately she started talking about the setup, you know, and the light and managing the light and the shadow uh, on the subject, you know, and all of that stuff is really important. It's like the painting, it, the, the painting starts when you're setting the stuff up and I spend a long time on that, that part of a painting. Um, so I want a low value here, but it needs to be lighter than this shadow. It's close to neutral, so let's start off just by mixing something pretty close to neutral. It's slightly lighter than this. So m most of the thinking about the value balance I do on the palette, you know, I look at the subject and see what's darker and what's lighter. And then I'll, I'll do comparing down here, you know. That's, a, that's probably, that's lighter. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of this. Small amount of chrome, but the, the, the this was green gold, uh, green, yeah, green gold. So that's raw umber, ivory, ivory black. A little bit of Michael Harding green gold and titanium white. Put a little bit on and see how it will sit. Because, no, it's too close to the it's too close to the shadow. I'm, I'm looking at that relationship between the light, the background in light, and the shadow of the rose. The shadow needs to be a little bit darker than that, this part, so that kind of defines. Well, my rose is moving, don't move. Let's try bringing down that shadow a little bit as well. Right, that's the relationship I want. That's the one I want to see.
So I'm just trying to really trying to get enough covered so that I can see how, how the colours are going to work, if the value is going to work all right. So I would have some parts of this would go lighter. Drop the chrome and let's just have a quick quick look and see if that would work. Like this edge turns away towards the light, so. Overdo it. I just want to see if it's going to work. I th I think it's going to be all right. I think it I think it's standing out well enough. Um, I have a feeling that this, this value here is going to be really key. I think it can go darker. I think it's going to be really kind of key to how it works. It's this I want to stand out. You know, this needs to be sufficiently lighter than this. You know, but this needs to be lighter than that. So it's like it's, it's, everything is dependent on everything else. I'm trying to manage the, these relationships to show what I, what I need to show. Oh, wrong brush. I hate it when I do that. Just a reminder that I don't forget that there's going to be something up there. So this And I don't, I don't really bother about painting the bars so much because if the, if the values are all right, um, you know, I mean, it's glass, so you see the background through it, so you can, you know, you can almost ignore it really.
Oh, well, that's very handy. That, what's that? The grey Pantone grey scale, grey value scale, Pantone. But are they um, are they Munsell? Hello, Lydia. Oh, no, controlling colour with the Monsell system, Paul Cantore. No, I'm sorry, that is not it. That's $85, right? The thing is, the Monsell book is $1,000, which has created a kind of a gap that, that various people are trying to fill with their own versions. Now, I don't want to be unkind to Paul, but I, I've, I've bought that book because I wanted to know I've got the Munsell book anyway so I didn't need it but I bought it to see if it was any good and I'm sorry the printing was not up to it it wasn't it just wasn't up to it no that's not it I'm afraid that won't help you um, a lot of the the color swatches were out when I checked them against the book and the printing was so bad in places that there were noticeable bands. It looked like the printer was running out of ink. So I want to get this value in for the front of the, the shelf thing here. And I'm trying to judge that color. It's a yellow brown. Now in terms of value, it's, I think it's slightly lighter than this. So here's just to show you how I would check this kind of stuff. I would get the value which I'm using for this bit of the background, which is pretty much there, that one. Because I'm translating the values, you know, so I get my little color checker and I'd hold up that. And then if I, if I angle it towards the light, this chip, when I hold it over the subject so that it exactly matches the value of the background, then I can check the value of the shelf against it. And to my shock and surprise, it looks like it's darker. I think I need a lighter chip. So you can make your own value scales and you can do this exercise, you know, with your own value scales. It's almost exactly the same. I think it's in value term, even maybe slightly darker, but pretty much the same value as this. Low chroma, yellow orange, or brown in other words. Yellow red. In Munsell they call it a yellow red orange. To everybody else. So this whole thing is just about getting this, you know, to, to look like it has light falling on it, but whilst keeping the chroma high. No, I don't think, I think I've got the, um, I've drawn it rather badly. I've, I've made it sit up instead of sitting back. <laughs> it's not great, is it? I'll have to sort that out. Oh, I've seen it, I can't. sort these things out before I go too far. At the moment, it's really easy to change things because the paint is really slick, you know. Later on, it would be more complicated. Trying to paint up to stuff and gets difficult.
I just want to sort out this drawing a bit before I go too much further. I think it is actually, um, this is, I'm not just making this up, I think it is actually beginning to sit up a little bit in the subject. Right, so, this is my shadow side of my, my shelf, so let's mix the light. Now that raw umber is a very yellow, I mean basically both umbers are oranges. They're low value, low chroma orange. I'll show you. So this here is, a Monsell calls this 5YR. 5 just means it's in the middle, so it's like, think of it as a middle, yellow, red, orange. Down here, raw umber, uh, burnt umber, sorry. Down here at the bottom. And, and raw umber is just a little bit more towards yellow. You know, so I actually probably want something Like around here, which is the next one along, which is slightly more, you know, and the, and the value wise, I can check it, you know, I want it to be about the same as that. So it's going to be about here, probably, probably is low chroma, so probably about there. Mm, maybe. Maybe a little bit more chroma. Yeah. Gives me an idea, you know, where I want to be. Based on the, the internal logic of the picture, you know, where, where I want there to be light. I'm very slow at this stage. I've, I've, sometimes I think it must be agonizing to watch me build up the beginnings of a painting because it's so slow. And all I'm doing is, there's nothing interesting. It's all just big areas. <laughs> Of, of value really and, and I'm thinking about the hue and the chroma as well but mostly it's the value I'm interested in trying hard not to get too into refining anything too much but I do want to make sure that I've got things in generally the right place. Because what's here is is not the same as what's there in the subject, it's, it's a translation into a narrower range, so I need to try and make this work as a painting. I can't match what is there. You can't anyway, you know, it's not, it's not possible most of the time, especially with flowers, high chroma flowers like this. I could bring out a yellow ochre might be useful here, but Let's see if I can get close to what I want without it. That's probably a bit too yellow. I think the value is good and the chroma is not bad. But So if I wanted that to go more towards orange, then all I've got that here that can make an orange is quinacridone rose. With cad yellow, which funny enough does make a really good orange. So I'm just sticking a bit of this on the palette knife and I'm angling it so it's the same value as the, the, on, as the subject. It wants to be a little bit more orange. I'm comparing, so I, I won't be doing exactly the same value 
that I see, I won't be matching that value exactly. But I can compare the chroma and the hue reliably. So that should be something like, right? I got a flat handy. I used a more. I usually use um, for wood like a, f a flat bristle. And it'll give you some kind of uh, texture. Might be too high chroma, maybe. See, I get a bit more down in my see. I think it's too high chroma. I just popped a bit of neutral in it. I'm very much feeling that I want to make it lighter but I want to resist it because I think if I do it'll start to argue with this here if I make this lighter if I focus on this area and I want to make the difference between the light and the shadow stand out more I will, I'll, I will take the steal the light from here this won't seem as light in fact I'm actually going to bring it down a bit just so this sits in the right places having the light So this is my light and my shadow for the background, so I'm just kind of uh, mixing between them a bit because I want a bit more of the shadow around here. Uh, now this is dropping down to the same value as the shadow, which I can't have. It's, it's getting too low in value, so I need to bring this up a little bit. And obviously because there's paint on there now, I need to... to have it on the brush something lighter than I want it actually to end up. Just a too much chroma on this wood, so I'm just dropping it a bit with a neutral. Oh, Diane, you got Kathy's video. Oh, you're gonna love it. <laughs> You're going to love it, Diane. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's going to be... I mean, she's basically giving it all away, you know, and it was really, really informative. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, learning... It, even if you think that you, you know... I'll be honest with you. When, at first, I, I, was, I had a, a, a slight doubt about getting them because... You know, what happens with me a lot is if, I mean, I'm in love with Kathy's work, you know, and every now and again, if I become too enamored of another painter's work, I find myself painting like trying to paint like them, except it just comes out as a bad copy, you know, and uh, 
this is why I love painting into oil. Look, just a nice soft brush and you can just pull the paint around. And yeah, so I was, I'm, I'm, and I still am concerned, you know, but, but, um, ah, the hell with it, you know, it's just going to be, it's just going to be brilliant to see in detail how she works. And I already learned some interesting stuff just from today, you know, watching, you know, someone else's approach when it's, it's so, it's hard earned over a long period of time, you know, you can learn an awful lot. I still have too much chroma, I think, on the wood in the light. What brush did I use for that? This one. Just a little bit more. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to ignore the, the the bit where it changes direction, and it it would be nice, you know, to put it in. But I don't want to detract from the flower. I just want everything to be about the flower. Um, Daphne, you got it too. Yeah, I noticed your comment on the Facebook thread. Hello, my dear. Nice to meet you. Rondine says, can I try this as a study? You can try it as a full painting. I don't mind. Paint it. Sell it. I don't mind. You know, I, the, the reference photos to me are just the starting point. So I put them up, you know, you, you can do anything you like with it. It's basically look at it as royalty free source material. I don't mind at all if you paint it. Uh, you know, if we both paint from the same source material, our paintings would be very different anyway, so it's not a concern for me. I like it, actually, when people take these and, and paint from them. I wish sometimes that the paint would stay this workable longer. Uh, this needs to come up higher. I love it when it's at this stage and you can just kind of push it around. This is what I was saying earlier on about um, not painting the glass. I think what people tend to do a lot when they, they see a vase and they paint the glass, they paint the edges of the glass, ig ignore it, you know. Mostly what you see with glass is the background, you know. And there's some, there are some funny little bits of reflection here and there that you get. But apart from that, you're mostly painting the, the background through it. So just look for, use the background colours and just look for areas of, of value and try and get them right. And, and it'll work, you know, if you try and paint the vase like it, but you'll end up with something which doesn't quite work. You're trying to paint light, you're not trying to paint a thing. Does that make sense? And if you get the values right, and, and that's why I put this in right at the start, because everything is relating to that, you know, um, then you'll be fine. Overall, I'm fairly happy. I've got nice chroma in the shadow here. It's slightly darker than this value here. Uh, it's closer, definitely, but I can't. I don't want to bring this value up anymore. Like the, these two values are closer than they are in the subject, but I don't want to bring this up anymore. Otherwise, this won't stand out so much. And then I'll, you know, if I bring that up, then I'll be like, oh, this isn't light enough, and I'll paint it lighter, and then I'll lose the chroma, and then, you know, I'm in trouble. Then the painting starts to go south very quickly, and I, and I, you know, you, you. You're basically, you're, you're left trying to you're fiddling and trying to figure out what's wrong and, and not being able to work it out. It's not a place you want to be. Yeah, Ginny, Kathy's lovely. She came to visit here uh, 
last year, was it? I think something like that. The boys loved her. She's an absolutely lovely person. And extremely good with kids, which is pretty much my benchmark of whether someone is a lovely person or not. <laughs> How good they are with kids. Especially mine. They thought she was great. Right, dark shadow. It's starting to. So I do think it's starting to come. I want to shift this shadow slightly more orange in places though. So whether I'll continue with this painting or not, I don't know, but I, you know, just as a, as a, as a color blocking, it's been a really useful exercise. I would definitely want some lighter areas Let's just try a little bit. See how I'm losing chroma? I'll bring a little bit of the quinacridone in to bring some chroma back and sacrifice a bit of the hue to do it, but... Lose the chroma really quickly. And just thinking about the um, about the internal shape of that rose, there's a, a shadow area here because the form goes like that there. So I would want to suggest that as well. So uh, where it comes. Oh, let's get some lead white out. It's just better at describing flowers than... Titanium is. It's oil though. I just added a bit of linseed oil to it because it separates in the tube and that bit that came out there was very dry. Won't have the handling qualities that lead white is so useful for. Now really it would be better to be waiting till what was underneath was dry to be thinking about this, but ah, it's too much fun. Do this bit. Just put way too much quinacridone rose in. Because I want it slightly, like just around here. It needs chroma still, but it wants to be this edge. So there's a, a shadow part here. Where's my shadow brush? Quite a lot of chroma, but it's not deep shadow, it's just slightly, not down here, but slightly lower value. And that would be like... I'm just trying to um, show a little bit more of the form There's a shadow area here.
I'm really just trying to put little bits in to see if it's kind of if it's going to work, you know. Um, I'm feeling reasonably all right about it at the moment. If I think it's standing out okay. If I did painted the values that I saw, I would have painted this way, way lighter. But I need this relationship here, so I can't. Um, oh, I was going to show you the green. So this is um, PY3, a, a diarylide yellow, ivory black, which gets you a really good, you know, yellow, yellow green. If you want some more chroma, I don't really need it, but just to show you, if you wanted a bit more chroma, you can add a bit of this Windsor green. Um, it makes it into more of a blue green. It adds chroma. So I want a green that's slightly darker than that background. Just because I want to, I want to, the first suggestion of where those the shadow areas of those leaves are going to go. Um, hopefully I've got enough chroma on there and I want ideally a, here we go a synthetic flat to draw them with so there's one here uh, actually let's cut into that there and um I think that's hitting about the right note and just a little bit darker than the background. And it's partly the chroma that's showing the leaf. And then there's one. some very dark actually this is probably that's really low value there So at the bottom of the value scale, if I want to make it more yellow, I'm putting in some of this gold brown, which will take it away from the blue green. It'll drop the chrome a little bit, but that's all right. And with this very slick surface, you get these really kind of beautiful kind of graphic marks with a with a flat synthetic brush kind of thing you'd want to kind of just get right and then leave except of course like what often happens in me is then I find I want to repaint the background and I'm change the value or something and uh, <laughs> then you end up having to obliterate all your hard work.
Oof, I'm getting tired. I think I'm going to have to stop. Um, I think I'm going to have to stop and have a break. I think I'm probably going to... Uh, probably going to continue with this, probably not today because I'm, I'm reaching my limit of focus now I think. I've kind of been painting since this morning, uh, working on another painting that sadly didn't work out. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit probably too tired to do much more painting. I'm just, I'm just trying to soften these shadow areas a bit. but leave a bit more texture here in the light. There's something nice going on here, I think, you know, with the, the edges and, and the colors. So I, want, I don't want to mess with that too much, soften some edges. This is um, Windsor and Newton Scepter Gold. Right. And it's working nice, I think, with all of this being very painterly and, and soft, you know, and then just the, the hard edges coming in here. I want to do, if maybe I, if I let this dry, it's going to take a while to dry, but what I may do is come back, if the rose changes too much, is come back and um, work on this after it's dry with some glazes, because the, the basic light and shadow is pretty much there, I think. It kind of looks okay. Yes, the, yes, the, um, yes, the Munsell book comes with removable chips. Um, you can get the student one. Don't get the fourth edition, get the third or the, the new one, the fifth apparently is okay. I'm liking all of this dark mystery round here. I'm really tempted to, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I, I wanna see, um, you know, one of my favorite bits of paintings like this is where there's light on the stems, sunlight on the stems, and uh, no, it's not sunlight, but light from the window on the stems. Um, and they're kind of a higher chroma green. These aren't that high, I don't think. Bring a bit of white in. And the value is is up there. The value is 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 quite high. Get a little bit of light and a little bit of shadow. Let's see if that's if I can bring it in with that. So the most noticeable one is down here. It's not light enough or high chroma enough. It's a bit better. And then this one over the other side is not quite as light.
This actually is, I think, the very darkest part. You know, I, I mean, how long has that taken? About an hour and a half. I, I worked for about four, maybe five hours on a painting earlier on today and just couldn't get anywhere. And I prefer this one already after a, an hour and a half's work. Funny the way things go sometimes. Now, of course, I say I stop, but it's sometimes it's difficult to. Especially since I know that tomorrow it, I won't be able to get the the um, the softness. I won't be able to get this quality again in the background and on the um, on the vase. Something's bothering me here. I think I've got too much black in and I don't have enough chroma there. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. Yeah, the second edition is good for the, of the student book. And um, the third, avoid the fourth. Um, the fifth can be okay. I've seen versions of the fifth that are fine and some that have a, uh, some of the problems of the fourth, but not quite as bad. Happy with the extra chroma. I think the main thing I'm happy with is that this is managing to stand out. This is still the lightest light and is working as a strong reflected light, but this area, it, it, I haven't lost too much chroma there. I've painted it a lot darker than it actually is, so I've tried to arrange the values in the rest of it to bring them together more to help that to stand out still as much as I can with paint. And that's mostly been dropping the value here and dropping the value here. It's very tempting because there's lovely light here. It's very tempting to really get into that and bring it out. But then this would not stand out anything like as well if I, if I did that. So uh, not a good plan, don't think. Thank you, Alison.
Oh, good one, Alison. Thank you. Yeah, I meant to put that in, link that, um, Cathy's. For some reason, Facebook isn't showing me all the comments, so it's a bit hard for me to... Hello, Victoria. <laughs> Thank you, Bundy. Hello, Jerry. Thank you. That's really good to hear. <laughs> Diane. Diane, you're embarrassing me. But thank you. I, do, I, I hope that I'm... This, I, your students can pick up something, at least. Um... That will hopefully augment what you teach because you know your paintings are stunningly beautiful. You see, I can't get the light there, I can't get it. have to live without being able to get the light there. On the, um, on the stems. Not the end of the world though, it doesn't really matter because this is the bit that matters. To me anyway. Oh, hello, Cindy. Sorry, I'm really late replying to you. Oh, there's loads of messages. I got really behind on the messages. I'm really sorry. You got too involved in, in looking and, and watching. Yeah, everybody should follow Cindy. Cindy Procious, oh, another amazing painter in the house who also streams live. <laughs> everybody should follow Cindy and Kathy. Is it moody? Claudia says, Claudia says it's moody. <laughs> I suppose it is. It's sort of mysterious down in, around here, isn't it? You know, a little bit mysterious. <laughs> I tell, yeah, it's funny. I, I find myself talking now sometimes without really realising I'm doing it. I, it's only a matter of time before I start talking when, there's, when I'm not live. And I'll just be standing here painting, like talking to myself. And the kids would be like, Dad, what's, what are you doing? Poetic, wow, thank you very much. That's a lovely thing to say, Christy. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up for now. Um, I don't know, I, maybe I might be uh, I think I've overdone the saturation on that camera. Let me let me sort that out because it's it doesn't look quite right. It's uh, I've got a bit too much saturation and it's a bit overexposed now. That camera. I'm, I'm kind of I'm trying to right at the end. I'm trying to bring it back down to to get the the camera exposure as close to what to what I'm actually seeing on the panel as I can. Not always easy. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably about it. Um, I think I might have overdone, when I went in here and added chroma, I think I might have overdone it a little bit. And that would be something I would maybe think about knocking back with a glaze later. This looks a little bit too heavy handed down there, I think. Perhaps. 
just can't stop fiddling sometimes. very welcome man okay I'm gonna leave it there for today um, maybe still on this one on Thursday I may leave it for a day to dry and come back to it we'll see what happens I feel like it could go somewhere it could you know with a bit more work it could be a nice painting so I may well come back to it oh the panel size by the way someone probably asked me that already and I've forgotten but it to, to check in that you know but it is the height is it's nine and a half inches by seven inches. There you go. An ex peony painting become a rose painting. Thanks very much, everybody, and I'll see you again on Thursday. Um, Thursday, I'll probably start at the same time. Might start at, at, at an hour earlier. We'll have to see what happens, depending on the weather. Okay, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.